cool Commodore 64 hacks, GitHub open sourced its database adapter for Rails, Simu goes open source, and a Unix legend continues to give back. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, my shirt this week is from Tumblr, a website that, as my shirt says, I have been on since 2007. So shout out to David and Marco. Uh, also, it has a pizza on the back. Um, also, yes, Tumblr does still exist. I have at least 20 dormant Tumblr URLs that are hilarious. All right, you don't care about any of that, so let's get into the news and open source project stuff. Okay, so first things first, just a reminder that Git and Merge is taking place in a couple of weeks in Chicago, Illinois. This is a conference for the Git community and the people who are part of the Git ecosystem, and it's going to be held on September 14th and 15th. More details are linked down below, and the whole schedule is now out, including some of the new workshops that have been added to, to the 14th. I'll be there, so if, uh, if you see me, please say hello. In other event news, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but please be on the lookout for some big news about GitHub Universe coming soon. Next, I wanna talk about two new open source projects, but these aren't actually brand new projects, but they are newly open sourced. Okay, so the first is Trilogy, and this is the database adapter that we use at GitHub to connect Ruby on Rails and Active Record clients to MySQL compatible database servers. And what's cool about this is that this, as I said, is not a new project at all. Trilogy has actually been backing all of GitHub's Rails monolith query activity since like 2015. And the name, which the blog post I've got linked down below explains, is a pun because it was GitHub's third adapter and it's used to query SQL. Cute, right? Okay, so anyway, like open sourcing this sort of a product takes a lot of long-term work. And it was championed by folks like Aaron Pressman and Eileen Uccelli. And I'm really, really glad to see this project is now available for anyone to use. So if you've got a Rails app that you're looking to connect to a MySQL compatible database, this should be on your list to check out. I've got more details in the blog post and the GitHub repo, both of which are linked down below. Okay, next, and other great open source news, version 2.0 of the Wii U emulator, Simu, was released this week, and get this, it is now open source. So the fact that Simu wasn't open source originally was actually sort of controversial in the various emulator communities, but the developer has worked really hard over the last eight months or so to move to an open source model, and hopefully this will also attract new developers to contribute. And I've got a link to the Simu developers announcement on Reddit, and the repo is on GitHub, also linked down below. But this is really great news for anybody who loves emulators. Also, very exciting news on this front is that Simu now has Linux builds. In the past, it only supported uh, Windows builds, but now it has Linux builds too. So you know what that means? Steam Deck, right, right? All right, links to all this stuff um, are down below, but I'm a really big fan. All right, next, I wanna give a shout out to everyone's favorite developer, Scott Hanselman, who has been chronicling his journey of refurbishing a Commodore 64 on his TikTok and YouTube accounts. There's so much creativity in this space, it's just really been thrilling to get this machine working. And the Commodore 64 actually turns 40 years old this month, which is nuts. And one of the things that Scott shows off is the Pi 1541, which is a real-time cycle exact Commodore 1541 um, disk drive emulator that can run on a, on a Raspberry Pi. And this can be really useful when you're trying to fix up these older computers. And so I've got a link to the Pi 1541 website and GitHub project page down below, as well as Scott's video compilations of some of his latest C64 hacks. Really good stuff. Okay, so speaking of legendary tech projects, I have to share this story that I came across thanks to Ars Technica. So Brian Kernigan is a legend. He's one of the earliest contributors to Unix. He even named Unix, actually, and he co-wrote the seminal book, The C Programming Language, AKA the KNR book, and he, he's the K in KNR. He's a professor at Princeton, and he is the co-author of Awk, which is a language that's used for text processing, and along with grep and sed is one of those utilities that is on most Unix-like operating systems. It's just one of the OGs. Okay, so Kernigan is a legend, and as Ars Technica notes, he owes us nothing. He's also 80 years old. Now, you might think that after such an illustrious career, a guy like that would take some time to relax. 
Not current again. No, he's still working on code. He actually recently sent an email to the current maintainer of Auk stating that now that he's had some downtime uh, because a school, I guess, is out for summer, he can find some time to still make very, very old software like Auk even better. And he's working on adding Unicode support, right? This is amazing. Kernigan actually mentioned this in a recent YouTube interview with David Brailsford saying, It's always been embarrassment that Auk only works with ASCII or maybe 8-bit inputs, uh, but it doesn't really handle Unicode at all. And so a few months ago, I spent <laughs> some time working with an incredibly old program. Um, and, and I have it at this point where it will actually handle uh, UTF-8 input and output so that you can have regular expressions that, you know, pick up Japanese characters or something oh, like that. Right. And that appears to work correctly. It's sort of in a staging version on the GitHub site at this point. This is amazing. This is so baller. I wish that I was that productive at 30, let alone 80. I've got a link to the interview, the Ars Technica article, and the commits on GitHub where BWK is still working through some of the bugs um, down below. I love this, keep it up. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so one of the best books that I've ever read about computers is a book called Code, The Hidden Language of Computer Hardware and Software, and it's by Charles Petzgold. It's an amazing book, and it really explains how computers work from top to bottom. I cannot recommend it enough. It was first published in 1999, and a second edition of the book actually was just released with lots of updates to handle stuff that didn't exist like 23 years ago. I actually got the Kindle version because the print edition is out of stock at Amazon. Apparently there's a paper shortage, um, but it's available at a number of other booksellers and I've got um, it linked uh, from Charles' website down below if you wanna check it out. If you've never read the first edition of the book, you really should, it's great. Even better, you know, go ahead and pick up the second edition. Thank you so much, Charles, for bringing this stuff into the world. I, I can't wait to go through the second edition even more fully. What's your favorite computer book? Let me know in the comments down below, but also let me know your thoughts on any of our other stories too. That does it for me. If you liked this episode, as I said, give it a like and go ahead and subscribe to the GitHub YouTube channel for all your nerd needs. See you next time.